Hi, um, today I just want to have a quick chat about moving to another country and the importance of language skills. When I moved to the Philippines, um, I found the language barrier is something that a lot of expats don't really bother with. Um, they assume that their partner will help them along. But I also find that a lot of expats pay way too much for things because they haven't bothered learning the language. Even having some vocabulary um, goes a long way for locals um, accepting you. Um, and it's not just relevant to the Philippines. If you're looking at um, doing the Schengen route and going into Spain, Portugal, uh, Germany, France, Holland, wherever it is, learning language skills now, not, not, before, not when you get there, you have to do it now because if you do it too late, you'll find that you'll struggle when you arrive. Um, understanding the basics like street signs, um, how to look for a job, how to, how to read advertisement, whether a house is for rent or for sale, all those sort of things are very simple tasks if it's all in English. But in another language it can become quite complicated um, and impossible to understand. So from a point of view of trying to get work and stuff, you need to learn it. It, it does, don't assume that there's some big British community or an, an English speaking community somewhere that's just going to you turn up and just get a job like instantly. It ain't going to happen. Um, and the assumption of that puts your whole uh, trip into Europe or moving to Europe at risk. The other side of it being that if you understand the language, you can integrate better. Um, what I find is you pay a lot less for things and people are a lot more helpful. Even if your language is uh, like pidgin Spanish, you know, is a, where you can have a mix of English and Spanish, you know, it was Spanglish. Um, the very fact that you're trying, people appreciate that you're making an effort. Also, it goes to show that you're actually integrating with the commu community, especially if you're gonna go for the Schengen route, where part of um, becoming a family in Europe is integration. And how much more can you show then you actually speak the local language. And you know, if you get local language, part-time job, full-time job, open a business, whatever. But whatever you're doing, you've got to be able to speak the local lingo. Um, on top of that, you'll find it easier for shopping, finding your way around places, and possibly get ahead of other people that assume that you don't need language skills. Because even with a bar, you know, you might be work, want to work at an English bar because there's really hundreds of them in Spain. But the, the fact is the delivery guy might, might not speak English at all. Um, I mean, the guy might have been on the same route for 30 years and it's not really important to him. He's assuming you'll speak Spanish because you're in his country. Doesn't that sound a bit familiar with... Uh, <laughs> the British in the UK tell everybody that they should speak English and when they're abroad assume everybody should speak English <laughs> but anyway the fact is get yourself some books um, and I'll be honest with you spoken, spoken language is probably more important than written English initially um, for me what I do is I look for audio which you can learn in the car and I just leave it running when I'm you know cause at the moment I'm working in Glasgow so Every um, Monday I'm doing five and a half hours drive north and on a Friday five and a half hours drive south. So plenty of language time. Um, just shoving it in there instead of some music, you'll, you'll pick up language um, words without even realizing it. Plus you'll find words that you're already familiar with um, because a lot of uh, languages around the world derive from certain languages in the first place and a lot of words are very similar all the same so you can become fairly familiar with it but also with the um, the audio instead of the books you can get the tones right um, because if you read it you might say something and it doesn't sound anything like it um, a, a prime example of that is local dialects where uh, near, near where I live uh, when I'm in the UK there's a place called Wadborough. 
which is W A D B O R uh, B O R O U G H Wadborough. No, I think I put an extra O in there. Anyway, the the point being, the people in there call it Wedbo. They actually silence half the word. So it, it doesn't make any sense. You know, if somebody said that to you, um, and you didn't know the spelling or whatever, and you're driving around there looking for a town that doesn't exist. Um, so the, this is why I like to do the audio first and then go back to written later um, because once you're familiar with the spoken you already get an idea what the written should look like and then you start becoming more and more familiar with it. Uh, that's my personal choice anyway, it doesn't mean it would be easy for you but also I have five and a half hours, well eleven hours a week to actually listen to audio in the car where most other people probably got ten minute drive to work every day with it. But language skills, I would say, is probably one of the most important things you could be doing right now if you're looking at going into Europe and serious about either doing the Schengen route short term for three, four months, and then or looking to go to Europe full time. Um, at the moment, we're looking at Spain full time, but I'll probably look at commuting to the UK to work. It's, it's the most convenient for myself and the most sensible. Um, way of making a good income um, because my work itself although it's mainly in batches you know for example I've got two months in Glasgow but I might have two three weeks of that where it's just paperwork um, which I do in Spain um, and yeah, other times I could be out in the Middle East for a month it, it you know the center of life thing is a bit odd for for my family but I'm prepared to put things on pause to move my centre of life, get everything uh, done and dusted, and then look at uh, keeping keeping things going again. All right. Anyway, thanks for watching.